Have you ever wondered why roller coasters make the clickety clack sounds they do when they're climbing the lift hill? Or how when they're on that lift hill, the train doesn't roll backwards and fall down? Well, this video explains all of that. In this video, I will be explaining how lift hills work, why they make the sounds they do, and prove to you that the sounds themselves are in fact a very safe thing. So without further ado, this is how lift hills work. A lift hill is a structural component that pulls a roller coaster train from a low point to a high point using large gears, chains, and sometimes cables and drive tires. Even though there's a bunch of methods on how you can lift a train, in this video I will be covering that of the chain lift. A lift hill uses three main devices to pull a train up. Firstly, there is the actual chain itself. It is made of solid steel, and depending on the type of ride a park has, these chains can get fairly large. There are two types of chains that are used on roller coasters in majority. There is the S-Link chain and the Straight Link chain. So what's the difference between the two? Straight links are very parallel looking. It almost looks like a ladder. Whereas S-Links are curved, almost like a V or U shape. Strength link chains have less wear and can lift a little bit more weight than an S-link chain. However, straight link chains don't have much stretch to them. They can't absorb shock at all. S-links do have lots of stretch and shock absorption. These can be found on rides such as boomerangs or rides with heavier trains because S-links are shock absorbers. Of course, the downside to the S-links are they wear way more easily and they can't lift as much weight as a straight link chain. Then you have the chain dog, which is the device that pulls the train up the lift hill. It's the device that hooks on to the chain. The chain dog is one directional, which means it can't slip off once it has already engaged with the chain. The chain dog is also pivotal, which means when it engages with the set of ratchet wheels, it can be pivoted onto the actual chain itself and begin the lifting process. Remember, it is one directional, so once the chain begins to push against it, it will not move. A chain dog is made out of steel, which means it can pull a very heavy load, aka a roller coaster train. Now on to the journey of a chain. The chain will start at the bottom of the lift hill, which is normally referred to as lift base. Lift base is almost always close to the ground so that maintenance can access it easier. The chain is then fitted into a super durable trough which is fitted inside the roller coaster track. This trough is often referred to as a slide plate. A slide plate or trough is made out of a very hard plastic called UHMW or ultra high molecular weight plastic. This extremely durable plastic allows for the chain to, you guessed it, slide all the way across the slide plates. The slide plates extend all the way up the lift hill with an extremely heavy chain resting on it at all times. There is also another trough completely around the UHMW trough. This secondary trough or brace is merely there to hold the chain down if the chain snaps or breaks. This will ensure that the undercarriage of the train will not get too damaged and also that no passengers will get hurt. It also will stop what's called a snowball effect as the chain tries to slide down the lift hill. The chain then rises all the way up the lift hill on top of these slide plates. On the journey up, the chain will travel at speeds of around 5 to 7 miles depending on what the park sets it as. At the top of the lift hill, which is referred to as lift crown, the chain is fed through the track and comes out the underside of the roller coaster track. Lift crown is where the chain liner, or the UHMW trough, receives the most wear and tear. After passing through the track, the chain then retracts its journey, this time down, 
through another UHMW trough. It is then fed again through the track where it connects and finishes the chain circuit. As said previously, there are three main devices to pull a train up a lift hill. The second thing that is involved is a set of sprockets. A sprocket is like a completely over-engineered gear. The primary purpose of these sprockets is to keep the chain moving and flowing at a constant rate, keeping it stretched and tight. There are predominantly four main sprockets. There are three at the bottom of the lift hill. One of these three is the sprocket that is powered by the motor. The sprocket that moves everything. This sprocket is called the bowl wheel. It, you could say, is doing almost all the work. When you see a chain moving up a lift hill, that's the bull wheel pulling the chain. Another sprocket that is used is called the tensioner sprocket. This sprocket keeps the chain tight throughout the whole lift hill by pulling tension and weight down on all the other sprockets. Another sprocket that is important to have is the tail sprocket. The tail sprocket is used to reroute the chain back on top of the lift hill. Finally, the last one is called the head sprocket and is a return sprocket at the very tip top of the lift hill. The head sprocket feeds the chain around and back down the lift hill on its return trip. There are some other sprockets hidden around in and near the bull wheel, but it's different for almost every manufacturer, so these are just the main four. Finally, the third thing that is needed is something that will power these sprockets, a chain, and a 15 ton roller coaster train. We need a motor. More specifically, a DC motor. A DC motor is essentially an electrical motor that uses direct current, or DC, to power a force. DC motors are used to power a lift hill because they have lots of torque, and they can be driven very precisely. They are more expensive than AC motors, but are often a lot more reliable and precise than an AC motor. AC is alternating current. In some cases, a manufacturer will result to an AC motor just because of the sheer power they have. But in most cases, a DC motor is used because they are small, reliable, and very precise. DC motors can also more easily start up and stop a lift hill. Nowadays, most modern rides will slow down the entire lift hill when it's not in use. And then once the train gets near the lift hill again, it will start back up and repeat the process throughout the day. Attached to the DC or AC motor is a gearbox. This gearbox will convert the high number of RPM in the motor to a low number of RPM for the chain. The gearbox is then attached to the bull wheel, which runs the chain. The key to everything is safety, and for roller coasters, it is a vital thing. There is always a possibility of things going wrong on anything. So how does one make up for it? Make enough backups to where when something does go wrong, it prevents injuries, casualties, and damage to parts. There are several factors into allowing a lift hill to be what's considered safe in a roller coaster engineering world. Some of these items are anti-rollbacks, brakes, catwalks, proximity sensors, and sprags. Let's start with ARBs, or anti-rollbacks. An anti-rollback is exactly what it sounds like. It is a set of teeth-like steel bumps on the track that will prevent the train from rolling backwards in case of an emergency stop, or any other way in which the train might stop. That might be a little bit confusing, so let me show you an animation that might help better explain it. Imagine a metal black stick. This metal black stick can climb up these teeth one by one. Now, what were to happen if I slid this metal stick backwards? It stops. The way in which these teeth are shaped become like a one-way road. You can go forwards, but backwards is impossible. Now again, imagine that every car on a roller coaster train has one of these giant metal sticks. Disregarding the fact that the wheels aren't touching the rails, this train can slide forwards up the lift hill. However, the second it stops and starts to slide backwards, the anti-rollbacks will catch each and every metal stick, which of course stops the train. Now, you might be wondering, that's cool and all, but right now the train appears to be floating in midair. You'd be correct. 
So let me throw one more element into the factor. Firstly, I'm going to shorten the metal bars so that they are a logical length. Then I'm going to add a one-way swivel or a one-way rotating motion to these metal bars. Now I can lower the train back down to the track. Try to guess what will happen. The train will start moving up the lift hill via the lift chain. Every time it passes one of these teeth, the metal bar drags over it and falls back into place. It will do this for every tooth. However, if the train stops and starts to roll backwards, the metal bars will make contact with the tooth, but because it acts like a wall, it will stop the metal bar from going anywhere, stopping the train in the process. This is exactly how ATR or anti-rollbacks work. Remember how I said every ratchet falls into every tooth? Every time this happens, the ratchet will slam down onto the steel, making a clank noise. Now imagine five ratchets doing this every second. This is exactly what you are hearing when you hear the loud lift hills in theme parks. It's just a bunch of ratchets making contact with the anti-rollback teeth. So next time you hear this, you'll know that it is a safety mechanism on the ride, just doing its job. If the ABRs were to fail, which by the way would almost be impossible since they are made out of almost solid steel, then some rides have what's called a sprag. A sprag is essentially a lock in the lift chain that when the chain stops, it prevents the chain from rolling backwards and the train then sits on top of the lift chain. Brakes are also a safety mechanism. Brakes themselves are a huge part of roller coasters, so without them, you can't stop a train. Brakes are a whole subject by themselves, so I'll spare you the details, but essentially, brakes stop a train by either using eddy currents, aka magnetism, clamping, which is exactly what it sounds like, or even sometimes drive tires. Some lift hills include brakes before a lift hill in order to slow down a train so that it does not fly up lift base at a neck braking speed. Sometimes these brakes use proximity sensors to communicate with the PLC, which is the programmable logic controller. Proximity sensors do all the talking between the train and the PLC. They are little sensor looking things on top of, on the side of, or even sometimes under the track. Proximity sensors will do things like tell the PLC where the train is on the track, or start up the lift hill, or even open and close the brakes. Proximity sensors also tell the PLC if the block zone in front of the train is occupied. So what's a block zone, you may ask? For those of you who are unfamiliar, a block zone is a section of ride that only one train may occupy. At the end of a block zone is a method to stop a train in case the block zone ahead is still occupied. This is the safety system that prevents roller coaster trains from colliding into one another. In other words, a block zone is a section of track in the layout that can only be occupied by one roller coaster train. So if this block zone has a train going through it, then this train will have to wait until it is empty to move forward. Same goes for all the other block zones. This ensures that there are no collision between roller coaster trains. Finally, there's catwalks. Catwalks are a big proponent of safety. A catwalk is a steel or wooden set of steps and platforms that are attached to the lift hill either on the right side or the left side, in some cases both. Catwalks serve the purpose of one, allowing access for maintenance to do lift walks every morning. A lift walk is where a mechanic inspects each and every aspect of the lift hill to analyze if anything and everything is working properly. And two, serves as an exit path for if and when the event of an evac does happen. For those of you who are unaware, an evac is short for evacuation. Evacuations happen when a ride falls south or when the ride operator hits the e-stop, emergency stop button. And there you have it, lift hills in all their glory. In review, lift hills use chains, chain dogs, slide plates, sprockets, motors, anti-rollbacks, sprags, brakes, proximity sensors, block zones, and catwalks. Now, every time you see a lift hill, you'll know exactly how it works. If you made it through the whole video, I want to sincerely thank you for watching. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce, so I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you want more of this series, be sure to comment below and like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Also, a special shout out to all the names on the screen. The footage was incredibly helpful and needed, so I thank you. As always, remember to keep on coastering, and I'll see you in the next one.